Hello everyone, it's Nancy here and today I'd like to talk to you about um, choosing uh, watercolor palettes. And um, there's so many different palettes out there. Uh, some companies have over 200 colors alone. So how, do you, how does a beginning watercolorist um, learn you know, what colors uh, would make a best all around beginning palette. And I'm gonna to try to uh, teach you a little bit of co about color theory today and, um, and teach you about what's called a split primary palette. So if you look that up on YouTube or anywhere, you'll get a lot of uh, information on a split primary palette. Basically you're going to get, uh, everyone remembers I'm sure, the um, the, the three uh, colors that make up your primaries which would be yellow, blue, and red. And then the secondary colors are mixtures of these uh, three colors. So yellow and red make orange, red and blue make purple, and yellow and blue make green. So we're going to fill out this thing and I'm going to show you what I mean by a split primary palette. Um, as you can see, I have two uh, circles for each of the primaries. Each circle represents a type of color temperature for each of these colors. One is going to be a warm one is going to be considered a cool. Um, when you do these uh, color charts, you're going to be able to see why one is warm, one is cool. Um, here's where we're going to put our warm red, and our cool red, our cool blue, warm blue. All right. So just. I'm just gonna I'm gonna explain all this stuff. I just want to write it down with my uh, good pen so you could so you could see it. Now, um, what I used when I was first starting out was um, a student grade of watercolors called uh, Windsor and Newton Coatman, and they are you know it's not their professional grade, but this little box. Uh, and this is the third one that I've purchased because um, I teach from these and if somebody doesn't have one, I'll give them mine. But this is the third one so far I've purchased and the first one I used it, you know, totally, um, you know, uh, uh, with my own sketches and paintings and, um, and I gave my second one away. But uh, I use this a lot. This little uh, uh, kit costs less than $20 on Amazon or Dick Blick or any of those. And it goes uh, in the, it, the colors are chosen to fit into the split primary uh, system. Um, what you get is, I'm sure you've seen these uh, on YouTube, you get a nice little plastic case where you could just put it in your pocket and or your purse and you get a nice mixing area three um, separate places and a very tiny little travel brush but usually I lose the doggone thing when I'm painting outside but it's very nice for you know working if those of you that are working in your Hobonichis it's you can get very very detailed uh, stuff and um, what I what I use with this is basically my water brush, one of these buggers. So I have water in them, and um, you know it's it's I don't need to take water with me. So, uh, <clears throat> but keep the little brush. It's nice for eyeballs and it's real detail. So. You will notice on the top of these, you have two yellows, two reds, two blues, two greens, three browns, and a white. I don't even open up my white because I'm just going to put a different color, probably purple, in there <coughs> because I, everything else is is uh, 
spoken for every type of color but uh, there's just no reason for me to use a white so um, I like the transparency and the white I use is uh, the white of my paper so I like the transparency of watercolors so I do not use the white at all and um, so let's get started with this all right so let's start with the yellow as you were traveling around the circle this color goes toward green and then this goes toward orange all right let's put our color and you could probably even tell by just looking at the pan where it should be does that look more like orange or does that look more like green I hope you can see this well yeah that's probably better it looks more like it could leans toward green so we're gonna put it there if you ever uh, if you have your own colors if you already have you know colors don't go out and buy them but try to make this chart with the colors that you have pick up your two yellows to see which one leans toward the green which one leans towards the orange and, and you probably already see this this one definitely looks orange so this is your warm color of the yellow now the reds which is next you can really see which one leans towards the orange because that's that's my um, indicator there that one goes here on the color chart because it really does look very very orangey and then this other color is called alizarin crimson and I will write down all the colors that are in this palette on, on the information bar below so that you can pick out if you have these colors you will be able to pick them out so you see that this one is a more cherry type of red it has like purple in it so it's considered cool. Now blues, a lot of people feel that ultramarine blue can be either warm or cool. I tend to um, treat it as a cool because it does give a beautiful, beautiful um, purple when mixed with alizarin crimson. So here's our ultramarine. Some uh, companies have a lot deeper and darker ultramarines so you can get a varied um, uh, you know you should try it or look at their color swatches the blue that they have here for your warm blue or the blue that that leans toward the green is called phthalo blue and this is a very very strong blue and you can see I just touched the 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 uh, palette and look at the vibrant color and do you see how it it uh, leans toward the green so <coughs> excuse me so let's make our secondaries now that we have our two primaries let's make our secondaries and there's a reason why you know we can um, uh, mix different colors to make different different secondaries but first we're going to go with uh, the ones that they match up with so the truest orange you will get by doing a warm yellow and a warm red as you can see that on this on this uh, wheel that is the closest ones to the orange so I'll put down my yellow first 
you can mix right on on your paper for watercolors. That's what's kind of nice. And, and and it really gives a beautiful tone too when you do so. Mix um, the orangey red and see what a nice bright orange it gives. Okay, now we're coming down. Let's mix up our purple and we'll take our cool red, which is alizarin crimson. And ultramarine blue. Look at that beautiful purple. And then lastly, let's do the green. We take our cool yellow and what we consider a warm blue or a blue that leans toward the green, which is our thalo blue. I did not take very much of this because it really um, makes a uh, bright color, but look at that bright, bright green. That is uh, very strong. Um, so that is our uh, split primary palette with the secondaries filled in. Now, what about you know the cool yellow mixing with the warm red or the cool yellow mixing with the cool red? Won't that give us orange as well? Yes, but because of it leaning toward green and green is the opposite of red, it grays it down. So how is this useful? When you want a very bright color, say that you're doing a pumpkin or a sunflower, you want to stick with the brightest colors. So that would mean the warm yellow, the warm red. You're going to get the most vibrant orange that is even possible. Now there are other yellows, there are other reds that will give you even more vibrant color uh, depending on what they are. And um, and so then you'll never get a gray or a dull color by mixing colors of the same uh, temperature. So if we mixed a cool cool uh, yellow with a cool red, well why don't we do that and see how that works. Okay, let's see what kind of orange we get. We're going to put it right here so that it's crossed from each other. Cool yellow and cool red. See how less of an orange it is from this one? It's just a little bit, you know, like um, not, not really dull, but less saturated, uh, a little bit lighter, probably because of the later lateness of the uh, yellow. Um, it seems like this is a lighter shade than, than this one. And so it's a, um, a lot less intense than this, this orange. Now, why don't we take the yellow, the cool yellow, and the warm red and see what we get. Cool yellow and warm red. It's too bad these things are. I'll try to not put so much um, water in my in my brush. But see how they're just a little bit different. This is really the lighter one. So if you wanted to do like a highlight on your pumpkin, maybe you might want to do the two cools together. Um, this really, the cool yellow and the warm, uh, the warm red doesn't really give a very, you know, you couldn't use this as a shade of this. So if, like for the little creases in the, um, pumpkin, you wouldn't be able to use that for that, but that gives a different type of an orange. Now let's try 
the uh, warm yellow with the cool red and see what that turns out with. Warm yellow, and let's put it right here. And then cool red. Now look at that one. Now that one could really be used as a shade, like the shade of the um, the creases in the pumpkin, or the uh, lower side, or the you know sides where the light isn't shining. That really could be used as a shade. So that was the warm yellow and the cool red. So let's mark those down. Warm yellow, cool red. This one was the cool yellow and warm red. And this one was the cool yellow and cool red. See all these different oranges. It's just so much fun to find different um, different colors within your palette. So look at all those. All those um, that you can just make just out of those four colors. All right, let's do the greens. Now we already did the cool yellow and the warm blue. This this is where it gets, you know, it, you you're doing a cool and a warm, but it's really it it really means that you're do, using the blue that that leans toward the green and the yellow that leans toward the green. So why don't we take the cool yellow and the cool blue and see what we've got. What kind of green do we have? Oh my, look at that. That's a real dusty color of a green, correct? that would be um, you know very useful in landscape you never see a tree that looks like this right but uh, a duller green definitely you would see that in the landscape all right um, let's try the warm okay so let's let's uh, so we don't forget what it is cool yellow and cool blue And let's try the warm yellow. And the warm blue. Wow, look at that. Still, that phthalo blue is just topping. I tell you, it's just, you don't really need a low lot, but that's, that's um, not as bright as this one, but it's still too bright. It's not a, a color that's usually found in nature. We would still have to dull that down, and um, that'll be a subject for another lesson. So, how to dull these colors down. So this was a warm yellow and a warm blue. And so now, which one am I missing? Cool yellow, cool blue, cool yellow, warm blue. Oh no, that's this one. Warm, warm yellow, warm blue, warm yellow, cool blue. All right, that's the one we're missing. So warm yellow. and cool blue. Oh, and then here's a really ni nice muted green again. A little bit different. But look at all the beautiful, beautiful colors we can make. Warm yellow, cool blue. There's our four blues, or greens. And then all you'd have to do is add, you know, a little bit more green, or I mean, a little bit more yellow, 
uh, to make it darker or a little bit more blue to make it bluer. And you know, you've you've still got a lot a lot of um, options there for ranges. And I encourage you to make these, you know, uh, just test them out. Do little swatches and everything. See how blue you can make this or how yellow you can make this by adding more and more and more yellow to see w what the range of it is. Uh, I'll do a, one, one thing on a um, scrap sheet of paper here. Um, okay, so let's do the purples before we forget. So this was a cool red and a cool blue. So what if we have a warm red and a cool blue? So let's write that down. Warm red, cool blue. It's late. <laughs> nice warm red. And nice cool blue. That doesn't look very purpley, does it? But yet it's red and blue. It looks more brown, like a purpley brown. Isn't that cool? So now you know how to make a really interesting looking brown. All right, now we're going to try um, warm red with warm blue and see what that looks like. Warm red. Warm blue. Look at there, almost a black. Very, very deep. Okay, so then all we need now, warm red, cool. So now we need the cool red and warm blue. Cool red, warm blue. Cool red. And warm blue. Yep, that that blue was is so strong. You do not need a whole lot of it. So I'm gonna put some more red in it to make it more purpley. That's that's a neat looking purple. So there you go. There are all of your, you know. I don't know. I would I would make all of these so you don't get confused. Uh, put them on a separate sheet with all of the little codes on them so that you know what you've got. But uh, always know that this is um, warm red and warm yellow equals bright orange. Cool yellow plus warm blue or blue that veers toward has green in it is the uh, brightest green or the truest green and then cool red and cool blue makes the uh, most vivid purple. So I hope that's uh, helped you a little bit and again if you uh, want to know what your colors are or um, you know private message me. I would be happy to talk to you um, about picking out your palette so that you can have a split primary palette. Now you can make any colors that you want to with this. And then with these, then you can add the um, the other ones that you get, which is our nice convenient colors. You have a, um, a green that, that has blue in it and a green that has yellow in it, more yellow in it. And then you have three browns, one that's uh, closer to a yellow, 
one that has red in it and one that has blue in it. And this little palette is all that you really need to make any series of paintings or anything. And uh, I really, I really love this little guy. And you know, I recommend you get one if you don't have any paints at all. So um, I hope you've learned something. Again, if you have any questions, just holler, and I will be happy to go over it with you. Um, I'm going to go uh, and do another, uh, like a color theory for beginners um, video next week, week and uh, keep on delving into this to make even more colors. And I'll show you how to do a really nice color chart for yourself based on your colors. So get your colors together because next week we're going to play and, um, and make a whole bunch of colors with our little split primary system. All right, so I hope you have a great week painting and learning about the colors that you have and... Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and uh, if you have any questions, just ask, and I'll be happy to an answer them for you. Hope you have a wonderful week. See you next week. Bye-bye.